we have the basic knight. Now to get the rook, we're going to need to obviously come down uh, from the knight height. And our rook and our pawn height, they're almost the same. And like we said before, that's going to be pretty close to two inches, a little bit over two inches high. So like two and a quarter uh, inches high is what we want for the rook and pawn height. So let's just make sure again what that's going to be. One, two, three, four. That's one inch. One, two, three, four. That's two inches and a quarter. So I'm going to turn and transfer that over to the side of this page. All my pieces are on the same board. And we're going to go ahead and start our rook base. I'm going to draw the center line up from that point. I'm going to measure up two and a quarter inches. So one, two, three, four, it's one. One, two, three, four, that's two and a quarter. And I don't mind the rook being a little taller than the pawn. So I think I'm actually going to come up maybe almost another quarter of an inch. So two and a half inches is going to be my rook height, and then two and a quarter inches is going to be my pawn height. That way everything tapers down. So now I'm going to put the base in. Our bases come out to about three quarters of an inch. And uh, the first bead on all the minor pieces is roughly a quarter of an inch. And then the second bead is roughly a little bit over an eighth of an inch. And um, I forgot, it's supposed to be set back a little bit. A little bit more. So there's that. Three quarters of an inch out from the center line, which makes a roughly one and a half inch wide base for the minor piece. Now, <clears throat> the rook uh, doesn't have a collar. So the space that we gain uh, from it not having a collar is um, important to remember. It, it changes how the visual weight of the piece is. Our rook, we're going to come out from the top, which is just flat. Let's come out just as wide as we did for the king and the queen. Uh, the bishop was not a wide piece. It's going to be like half an inch wide uh, on the bishop's hat or the bishop's mitre, the top of the bishop piece. But the rook is going to be heavy. I mean, it's wide. That's a strong piece, right? I love the way that looks. So if we come out almost half an inch here, that means we're going to have almost a full inch of width at the top. So that may be a little drastic. Let's not go a full inch. Let's go um, just under that. Let's go like three quarters of an inch wide on that rook. Still pretty wide. And we can add to the length of the rook, add to the length of the rook top to give it uh, more visual weight. So come down. I like my rook to be not quite square. So like we could come down if it's if it's almost three squares wide we could come down and make it three squares tall as well but um, I like it to be slightly disproportional. I like kind of a flat top to the rook. Um, a little bit squashed at the top. And <clears throat> I like a very um, strong base. So the rook doesn't have a collar like like the bishop and the queen and the king and the pawn will. But the rook does have um, kind of a, a capital underneath the 
uh, top here, um, at the top of the pillar, if you will, coming up to it. So that capital is going to be very straight. It's not round. Doesn't have to be huge. You could make it thin, like about an eighth of an inch, something like that. And then we're going to come inside that capital, and that's where we're going to start our taper. Now, this taper is a very straight taper. And, and how you do this taper is very important because, um, you know, if it's really wide at the base, to me, that just looks weird. If it's too narrow at the base, that also looks weird. So we kind of have to plan this one out. Maybe we come in straight for a really long portion. And then we curve out. Oh, you know what? We have that. I forgot. So here's kind of the base that I like on a rook. So I like to have it come pretty much straight out from the capital of the pillar here, that little ring, basically straight. Then it cuts back. And that linear geometry instead of having curves that line really gives it a lot of visual weight now as I'm looking at it I kinda go you know what if that gets doubled on this side and this is doubled on that side I think I do want a little bit bigger top so I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit of an angle to my top and make it wider at the mouth, if you will, or the very top of the rook than it is at the base. And that adds visual weight to the top of the piece. And also just adds a, a cool visual effect to the rook in general. And we are going to cut obviously the classic rook kind of parapet or whatever you would call that on a castle because that's what the rook emulates we're going to cut those dados on the top of that eventually and that's the profile of the rook so the profile of the pawn is going to be uh, like we said about a quarter of an inch smaller than that so just two and a quarter inches that was two and a half inches so I'm going to come down here draw my base for the pawn I'm going to come up my center line One, two, three, four, one inch. One, two, three, four, two inches, two and a quarter inches. And <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and make our base just like the others. Three quarters of an inch out, one quarter up, and then an eighth up for the second bead. Making that. And then we're going to go to the top. Now the top of the pawn is a ball. It's a sphere. So when drawing a sphere on graph paper, um, it's cool to go ahead and make yourself kind of a, uh, a box, if you will, to contain the sphere. Now do we want a really small one like that? something that would fit inside here 
or do we want a nice hefty uh, ball on on that pawn? Personally, I like the larger headed pawn, so we're gonna take this entire uh, four quarter inch squares here and make that the size of the pawn's head. So there's our center point, and you could use a compass if you want to make this really perfect but I don't mind just kind of roughing it in for this video alright so we've got our circle and then the rest of the pawn is simple we need our collar so everything has shrunk the collar instead of going out two inches or two of these squares um, we're now probably only barely coming out past one of them. So we have our smaller bead, which is something like that. And our larger bead, which is something like that. And you wouldn't even necessarily have to do two of them. You could do um, one and just leave it at that if you wanted to. But I like keeping things symmetrical and keep the symmetry of shapes. Now all we need is the curve coming from the base of where the pawn joins into like the where the circle here on the head joins into the collar. That's going to be kind of where I visually start my curve and the end of the tapers obviously going to be like out there we're going to have our cut back something like that and we're going to make that a curve it's pretty straightforward and you can keep refining this shape. Maybe you want a little bit more material there. And that's it. That gives the profile for all the pieces. And you can then take this and photocopy it, which is what I recommend doing or just throw it on your copier and make a ton of copies of your basic chess piece layout um, and then start cutting these things out and gluing them to uh, your material that you're going to use for your form and then uh, we'll see you in the next video where we actually turn these guys on the lathe using the floral foam technique that I showed in my five minute chess piece video so uh, thank you so much for watching this video and uh, if you like please subscribe to my channel Conrad Craft um, hit the little bell notification symbol to be notified when I upload the next video in this series I'm going to do the full series where I make the full chess set and we cast it and, uh, and go through that whole process so hope you enjoyed this video I'll see you next time